All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to replace a valve body in a Lexus IS 250 2012. Um, I'll post more information about the specifics in the description. So we're gonna lift this up on the rack first and get it started. Here's the valve body right here. I'll post the part numbers in the description. You're gonna need about four quarts of WSATF. First, we're gonna start by taking this cover off. It's 410 millimeter bolts. Then you're gonna take off these two 14 millimeter bolts right here, as well as these two 14 millimeter bolts and nuts for the exhaust. Then you should be able to remove this bracket We're gonna take this 14 millimeter drain plug and drain all the fluid out. Then you're gonna let the fluid drain and then cap it back up. And then you're gonna hit all the 10 millimeter bolts around the transmission pan and be able to drain the excess fluid. Then you're gonna take off these four 10 millimeter bolts to remove the transmission filter. Here's a shot of the solenoids on this side that you're gonna be removing and transferring over to the, the new valve body. You're gonna to have to remove this wiring harness. Some of them have push down tabs where you just push down and pull out. And some of them have no tabs, but you stick your screwdriver in like a pocket flathead screwdriver, stick it in there and then you're able to pull out the harness connector. There is one harness connector that is connected to a 10 millimeter bolt. It's in the middle and a little bit towards the front. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the piece right there. You just take the 10 millimeter bolt out and it should just slide right out. Once all the connectors are free from all the solenoids, just move it out of the way and just let it hang over the exhaust. Remove this 10 millimeter that holds that little piece and it should drop straight down. Here's the manual valve that moves when you shift the gear selector from park, reverse, neutral, drive, low. How I took this out is probably not the correct way to do it, but it is a shortcut. So you just use a little mini pry bar and pry where those little teeth are at. And then you just push on the little pin and slide the lever downward and it should pop right out. Once it's out, just let it hang down freely. Here's a picture of all the bolts that you need to remove in order to get the valve body out. Beware when you take this valve body out because there will be pieces flying out. One of the accumulator springs that you see right there popped out on me. So here's the back side of the valve body that you don't see when it's in the car. See those four shaded circles on the left? The third one down is where that accumulator spring popped out. So be careful of that. Also, this little check ball connected to this plastic sleeve popped out as well. This little spring is supposed to sit inside that plastic sleeve connected to the check ball. Thank God I was able to find some of these pictures online to help me figure out the correct orientation to put this valve body back together. Beware of these three O-rings, they might pop out on you. So just put it back together with some petroleum jelly and you'll be fine. Now to put this accumulator spring back in, sorry I couldn't get it on footage, but you have to use a flathead screwdriver holding in one hand 
and then holding the valve body with your other hand and then you need an extra hand to start threading the 10 millimeter bolts back in while pushing it all back together. Here's a shot of the both valve bodies, new and old, side by side. The new valve body comes with no solenoids, so you have to remove all those 10 millimeter bolts holding the solenoids in and transfer them over to the new valve body. There's a couple solenoids you gotta pay attention to. You gotta take this 10 millimeter out, slide out that little metal piece, and there's gonna be a pin inside locking the solenoids into place. Grab a magnet and pull that pin out and the solenoid should come out and slide out freely. Just be a little careful when trying to put the pins back in. So just wiggle and jiggle it around until the solenoid lines up with the actual slide spot position thingy, whatever you want to call it, and it slides right in. And then you're able to put the little metal bracket on and then bolt that 10 millimeter on it. Take note of all the bolts that you remove because they are different lengths, so make sure you put the correct bolt in the correct bolt hole. Laying out the bolts out in the position that they go in on the valve body helps with memorizing which bolts go where. Alright, so now that your old valve body is out, you should have already transferred over all the new solenoids onto the new valve body. So now it's time to reverse the process of removal and put the new valve body in the car. Here's a solenoid identification chart. Here are some of the torque specs to help you with reassembly. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, just drop a question in the comments and I'll do my best to try to answer any questions you have. Remind you, I'm not a Lexus tech, so I don't have all the answers, but I'll try to help you the best way I can. If I don't respond here, then message me on Instagram. Here's where the refill hole is located on the transmission. It's towards the front. So here's how I did it. I filled up about five quarts of trans fluid. And then I capped it up, turned the car on and let it run for about 10 minutes, removed the overflow drain plug, and let the fluid run until it stops running and dribbles out and then you just cap it off. Okay, so I used the 15th, 16th socket to remove the fill plug on right above the oil pan. And I put about five quarts of the fluid in there, fill it up till it starts pouring out of the same hole, cap it off, tighten it down, then start the car and let it warm up. Make sure you don't hear any funny sounds, any ticking or anything like that. If you do, shut it off immediately and take the pan back off and see if all the bolts are tightened and go from there. Crack this bolt and make sure the excess fluid runs out. Once the fluid starts dribbling out, then just tighten it back up and then you're done. This is how I replace the valve body on this transmission. I'm not responsible for anyone that blows up the transmission, but this did work for me. So, just trying to help people out there that can't have access to certain resources. So, hope this video helps you out, and see you guys next time.